What's up, everyone? Welcome to the Drone to 1K podcast, season three, episode six. Today, we are going to be interviewing Jonathan Stetler. Uh, Jonathan is actually one of the students in our Drone to 1K course, the program that we developed to help people um, start successful drone businesses from scratch. So Jonathan had started his business uh, before joining the program, actually, and then went through the class and continued to build it and um, is now in the 1K club. He's had a a 1K month and growing, um, and we had him on the podcast to talk about his experience of starting his drone business from scratch, building it, lessons along the way. Um, He still works full-time at the time we did the podcast recording, Um, so you'll get to hear about if you maybe are working full-time and you're wanting to start something on the side, um, how do you do that? How do you make it successful um, while working and um, building a business? So I know that's a lot of a lot of work and a lot of things to manage. So hopefully you get a lot out of um, this episode with Jonathan. I had a lot of fun talking to him. Again, I've got I got to know him a little bit through our um, Drone to 1K group, and we interacted and had some office hours and things like that. So pretty pumped to bring that to you. A couple of housekeeping items before we dive into the interview. Uh, we've got two courses right now that you can get for just a buck, one uh, dollar. So we have a drones 101 course, talks about uh, just basically the basics of drone flying, how drones fly, all the components, um, gives you flight exercises. So if you're newer to drones or you want some specific, like, hey, how does this stuff work? How do I get good at drones? How do I get good at flying? You know, what makes them tick? Um, you can get it for a buck. Just use the promo code podcast, all one word. Um, go to our website, dronelaunchacademy.com. If you go over courses, you should see in the drop down just under courses, it should say Drones 101. I also have another course, similar, but not really, kind of, uh, Mavic Mini 101. So this was a course we created just for the Mavic Mini. It shows you everything from how to register the drone. You might be thinking, well, David, you don't have to register the Mavic Mini because it's so light. Um, it's actually one gram underneath the weight restriction requirement for registration. So even if you add propeller guards, you have to register it. Or if you're flying it for commercial purposes, you have to register it anyways, because if you're uh, registering it under part 107, meaning you're going to do it for business, use it for business, you have to register it regardless of the weight. So we walk you through how to register it. Um, If you want to get your part 107 license, we show you how to do that. Um, Everything about the drone, all the software, all the quick shots, um, basically it's like the world's most comprehensive tutorial put into course format. Um, and then we give you some quizzes and then uh, a little test at the end. If you can um, answer all the questions right, you get a certificate that shows how you pass this um, Mavic Mini course. And that actually unlocks some additional discounts to other courses if you're interested in that. So pretty pumped about that. Mavic Mini 101, it should be up there as well. Promo code podcast. You can get that course for just $1. There's no catch or anything. Uh, we just want to make some of these smaller courses accessible to people. So um, normally those are 50 bucks a piece or 49 whatever. Um, but if you use that promo code, you get it for just $1. All right, one more thing to annoy you with before we get into this episode. Um, Getting a lot of positive feedback on the shirts that we send people. People say things like, Dave, the softest shirt I've ever worn. I love this shirt. We actually had a podcast coaching call um, with one of those stuff we're giving away where people can come on and ask questions um, of our podcast guests. And one of the guests showed up with a drone launch shirt on. He's like, oh, I love this shirt. So if you want a drone launch shirt, um, two ways to get it. Number one, leave us a review on the podcast, Apple Podcast, somewhere where you can show that, hey, I've written you a review, screenshot the review, send it to me, david at, uh, david at dronelaunchacademy.com, and um, show me that you left a review, and I'll send you a shirt, even if it's a not a good review. I would like a good review, obviously. If you have a negative things to say, just email me, um, but you know, I'm just looking for a honest review. Um, put it up there, send it to me, we'll get you a shirt. Uh, where I'll send, you'll send it to me and then I'll forward it to George who can get you a shirt. Uh, a second way to get a t-shirt is if you look, uh, if you're watching this on YouTube, you can go in the video description below, or if you got this uh, link in an email, or if you're just listening to the podcast as it's coming out, if you're on our email list, you should have gotten a link to a one question um, test quiz, whatever, that asks you a question about this episode just to make sure you listened to it. You just answer the one question and you'll be entered to win one of five things. Number one, a 15 minute coaching call slash Q&A with the podcast guest from that week, a shirt, a mug, a hat, 
or a free course. And you can put the order, uh, your order of importance on which one you'd like to win if you get selected. Um, and then we'll, we'll hook you up with that. Um, this is for people who are kind of first movers advantage. So there's not as many, right? Because it kind of weeds out the field because you have to get in the first week. So your chances of winning um, are much higher, especially if you do that. So click the link either in the email that you got about, the, um, about this podcast episode or in the YouTube video. Okay, with that housekeeping stuff out of the way, let's get into this week's interview with Jonathan Stetler. All right, everyone. Thank you so much for tuning in to the Drone to 1K podcast today. Uh, I have Jonathan with me on the on the podcast today. Jonathan, why don't you say hey and what's introduce going, yourself? What's going on, everybody? Jonathan Stetler. I'm based out of uh, Upper Black Eddy, Pennsylvania, just about an hour west of New York City and an hour north of Philadelphia. Okay. I was going to say thanks for the – because I was like, people <laughs> – I'm not super familiar <laughs> with Pennsylvania, so I'm glad you yeah. kind of gave the, the reference here. Um, cool, man. Well, thanks for coming on today. Um, you know, you and I know each other through some drone launch uh, courses, and um, we've talked in our Facebook group a lot. Mm. Um, but I'm excited to have you on. I think you're the first um, drone to 1K member that we've had on the podcast. So I'm gonna pop some champagne uh, right now. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No. So it's uh, so it's it's awesome to have you. Um, it was it's been fun to chat with you, and you've been super helpful and active in helping everybody else, kind of in the group. Um, that's been a part, so I really appreciate that. But, um, yeah. but today, uh, I just want to get your background and your story and let you kind of share, um, you know, your experiences with everybody. I mean, so if you're not familiar with the podcast, um, you know, we're in season three at this point, so I'm assuming you might have listened to other episodes, but if not, um, I'm not talking to you necessarily, Jonathan, but for people listening, I know Jonathan, you've listened to a lot of the episodes, mm -hmm. but for people listening, if you're new, um, we essentially find drone pilots who have um, found some success with a drone business. So uh, our minimum requirement to be on the show is make at least $1,000 a month with a drone business. So have some people who are either just starting out or they're on the, doing it on the side, but they're finding success. Um, all the way to people who are you know, making really nice full-time incomes with it. Uh, so kind of a wide variety. So we try to, try to get, uh, encompass a lot of people, um, but I'm excited. Uh, to talk to Jonathan today. So I'll, uh, I'll stop talking at this point and let you uh, get to it. So why don't you tell us a little bit about um, yourself, your background, and like how you first got into drones. So it's, it's actually kind of interesting. So the, I've always been interested in drones, but the thing is I never actually mustered up to actually go in, out and get into drones. Like I remember the first time I had seen him, one of my friends was flying one of the, uh, I think it was one of the original Mavics, the Mavic Pros. And he was just sitting there in a the parking lot and I saw this thing hovering. And I'm like, that is insane. Like the thing's just, it's stationary. It's not moving. And I kind of started talking to him about it. He kind of filled me in about how it works. It's got, you know, geosynchronism. It's kind of just, it's connected. It's thing. It just does its thing. And I kind of looked, did a little bit of research and I was like, ah, you know, I didn't want to pull the trigger on it just yet. And just kind of held off for a few years. And, um, my background is in mostly photography and that's always been my thing. I've always been into like architecture, photography, landscape photography. I tried doing the whole wedding thing for a while and that just, you have really good ones and you have really terrible ones. And it didn't, <laughs> it was, it was one of those things like, you know, you'd have a great wedding and then you'd have two terrible ones after that. And it's uh, for me, like it's the, the being personable, like it's a task and meeting all these different people all the time when you're at a wedding party, you know, sometimes things get a little bit out of hand and it's hard to kind of bring everybody back together. And I just, I realized like as a photographer, like it's, it's an easy way to make a lot of money, but it's a lot of work, not just mm. when you're there, post-production, pre-production, dealing with just the dynamic of people. It just, it really takes a toll on you. You know, and you'd shoot a wedding on a Saturday and it would be Thursday the next week and you're still just physically trying to recover from that. And you've, right. you're still editing. You're not even halfway done yet. Mm -hmm. And so for a while, I had kind of just mulled over this idea of like, I want to be a photographer, but what industry can I get into? Um, and it was probably around, it was actually pretty recently. Last year, I, I purchased a Ronin M gimbal okay. and I had avoided video. I've just did photographs. I'm like, I don't have the computer to do the editing. I bought this gimbal and I, I'm a Taekwondo student and I had decided to try to put together a short video for the school. And, you know, it wasn't necessarily a promotional video, but they're having a competition or tournament. And I went out for the day, I went home and I just started editing. And this is my first time editing anything. And the thing is, is after about an hour and a half, I finished up this like three to five minute video yep. and I was completely taken aback by like, this was a, the, the process from beginning to end. It, for how I think it flows. Because the thing is, I'm a creative person. I love this idea of taking nothing and turning it into something. And that was where it kind of just 
the spark happened. Mm -hmm. I avoided video for years. I finally got into something that I was passionate about. I understood the logistics of how it needed to be presented. And I took the afternoon and just edited this video and I pushed it back to the people that, you know, they weren't asking for it. It was more of just kind of a, a thing for them. Sure. They're just like, dude, this is really good. I'm like, what do you mean? They're like, this is really good. I'm like, uh, they're like how long have you been doing this? I'm like, this is my first video. <laughs> Like, I've never done this before. Like, you know, like, yeah, I've, I've, I've done music production. So I understand taking like snippets and cutting the ends off and shortening it up and kind of mm -hmm. blending it together. But I've never actually done it with video. Mm -hmm. And that was something that is essentially what started it for me. Um, shortly after that, you know, this, the concept of drones was always still in the background. I thought it would be a good idea to start working on promotional videos for businesses and for small businesses. And so at that point, that's where I started kind of building the business, um, my, my business that I have now. So I officially went and legitimized myself as an LLC back in, um, I want to say it was actually August of last year. So this is my official one year anniversary of being nice. a you know steady focus media LLC. Awesome. Um, and it was actually kind of interesting because like when that had occurred, you know, like I had loosely done photography for about 15 years. I, took myself seriously as a photographer, but it wasn't until I actually went through and turned it into a business entity that it felt more validating for myself. Because mm -hmm. at that point it's like, I'm official. Like I have to pay taxes. I have to register my business with the local governments and stuff. I have to make sure all my checks and balances are all sorted out. And that was for the first time in my business's life, I actually took it seriously. Mm -hmm. And so what happened was, and it was actually really interesting because, you know, we're dealing with a global pandemic right now. Um, well, you know, when you're like, hey, I'm going to start doing business, small business videos, and then all of a sudden all small businesses shut down, where do you go? Yeah. Like, what do you have? And the thing is, is like, I had just bought a drone a few months before that, started flying around. It was mostly fun. And then I was like, hey, maybe I can make some money off this drone. And then I started looking up drone laws. And realize, hey, there's a thing called a part 107 that you need to have to do any commercial work. And I'm like, oh, okay. Um, I guess I should start looking into this. And that is how I found Drone Launch. Okay. Um, I looked around on the internet. I mean, I originally was going to start trying to study. Like, I'd watch some of the videos on YouTube. Yeah. And they're good. But the thing is, is they're very, they're truncated. They're very short. And the thing is, is while the test isn't a very long test, there's parts that you just, you don't know what you're going to get when you take the test. Right. And so that was where I kind of found when I started diving into drone launch, you guys broke that down. You guys broke it down into individual modules. You extrapolated on each individual module and it was a fun learning experience. That's and that's kind of where this whole thing kind of just, it's been this snowball, you know, like I studied for the test for, I think it was about like five to six weeks. Yeah. You know, I've read those like miracle stories where people are like, yeah, I studied like a weekend and I went out on Monday and took, you know, took the test and I passed with the yeah. 92 and that's awesome. Like, that's great. But like, you know, I hold a full-time job. Like this is my business right. is not my full-time thing. And so um, I'd studied for the test and like, I was stressing out about it. <laughs> like, I'm like, Oh man, I hope this passes test. I'm going to get in there. And like, you know, like, uh, you know, I have well, it nerves. Is a little bit of a stressful <laughs> environment. I mean, because you're going, you have to travel to a testing center. They're very like a lot of times they're pretty serious about like empty your pockets and this. oh my god, yeah, it's like, absolutely. It's like you're taking like uh like a really standardized. You know, you're going in there like sheet of paper, no, can't take any note. You know, it's it's a little intimidating where you're like, okay, all right, you know. Well, it was interesting because like when I had gone from my test, you know, this is all pre-pandemic. Um, like people are going in there for like legit government jobs you know i went to i think it was a psi exam center and like mm -hmm. it's not just like you know hey you're here for um, aviation style tests like this was just pe general people coming in for all these serious tests whether it's social workers whether it was um what was it um, social services stuff like that like okay. you know so it was a very serious but then like it was interesting because i could listen to all these other people and I'm like all right jonathan step up i'm like all right and i I was allowed to bring more stuff in compared to some of the other people. So I didn't feel oh, really? that. Yeah. Like it felt strange until I got to that moment. I'm like, Oh, well, mine's maybe not that important considering like yeah. this person, like they're not allowed to have bathroom breaks. They can't do any of that stuff. <laughs> it, yeah. It was, it was crazy. Yeah. So, um, I remember walking in there and I, I took the test and I, you know, I was stressing out about it and I finished it and it was like 40 minutes Nice. And like you get your results that moment and I walked out and I got a 92 on it. And I was like, nice. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. No, I was, I was really excited about that. Cause like, you know, like I want to pass, you know, and like, you know, yeah, you need the minimum score to pass, but you know, always doing better is more reassuring. Yeah. Yeah. And so at, at that point, like, you know, you're like, I could fly. Like I could, I could legit fly now and go yeah. do this. And, um, and that's kind of where the whole story starts as far as the whole drone to one K thing. Well, and just like you said about how, you know, sometimes for yourself, you know, you, you're saying, 
you were talking about how when you kind of started an LLC, at least internally, it's like, oh, hey, this is a little bit more, this is a legit business now. You like, it helped you take it more seriously. And this is probably just another kind of vote in that category for you of, oh, you know, I'm getting more and more serious about it. And, Correct. you know, probably helped you kind of keep some momentum going and, and keep pursuing it, you know, right? You know, and so like the one thing that I, like there's, being like legitimate, being a legitimate business and being able to sit there and put, say, Hey, I am a part 107 certified pilot. You know, like that's something not many people can say that like, yes, there is a, a, an influx of people getting into the industry. I mean, I, I'm, I'm one of them. I'm a prime example. Mm -hmm. um, but it's, it just having that certificate doesn't mean that you can run a business. You can run a successful business. You can keep yeah. continually running that business. And that's something I don't think a lot of people realize when they go for that, that cert certificate. Yeah, that's a, I mean, I, I feel like we talk about that every, every once in a while on the podcast. So that's kind of like a, a hard reality for people sometimes because they're like, well, I got my part 107, you know, where are all these jobs at? You know, it's like, you don't go and become a plumber and just like go home and be like, oh, okay, well, why are people not calling me to come like fix their sinks? It's like, well, absolutely, uh, because you're not, <laughs> you haven't started the business yet. <laughs> yeah. So I think, I think that's a really good point. And I, and that's one of the reasons, you know, why we started this podcast, right? Is to help people like, Hey, here's what other people are doing and the steps that you have to take if you want a business and you want it to work and you want to make money, you know? So, um, so yeah, I'm glad we have people like you coming on here Thank to you. share your experience and how you got started and everything. And, um, sorry, I feel like I cut you off. What were you going to say? No, no, it's kind of to kind of go with what you're talking about. Like, you know, I was a little bit, I guess the podcast is what kind of really established a lot of the groundwork for me as far as like the, the test group for the, uh, to, to join the one K thing. Like I was always a little bit ahead of the curve, but the thing is, is as the modules came out and as I watched them, I watched how it was applicable to me building my business. Cause like, I didn't necessarily have that template beforehand. And the part that I realized is as I watch more of this, you know, as I watch these weeks unfold, it's all applicable. Everything mm -hmm. that you guys have talked about at this point, like, and you know, you guys have covered a very large a broad spectrum of what how drones can be used in any industry not mm -hmm. just necessarily like real estate or land surveying or crop management um, you guys cover all aspects of that and that's the thing is, is i see how what your topics are whether it's branding website building um the last one with the whole real, uh, real estate stuff like everything you guys have said so far like while it's not a perfect template for my business right. it's all very valid information and it's yeah. something that you know I wish I had this a few months ago because it would have made a lot of this easier to sort out. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I can only imagine like, you know, like right now we're still in, the, you guys are still in the infancy steps of building this program, but what it's going to mm -hmm. be in a year or two years once it's actually thinned out and you know, really just honed in. Yeah. And I can see this being a very important thing for a lot of people building businesses. No, well, that's, that's really cool to hear at least coming, you know, from you because I've been trying to get, you know, it, and again, for people who maybe are unfamiliar with what we're talking about, um, we started a program where we took a hundred, uh, or we accepted a hundred people into a, basically a test group where we were creating a program for helping people start drone businesses from scratch. Right. So we had a hundred people sign up. We had several different, um, podcast guests that had, we found some, or took some of our six figure, um, business owners that had been on the podcast. So they were kind of like, you know, more established, um, the instructors along with, um, tax accountants and people who do, did SEO. We have some paid advertising people coming up um, because we're still kind of towards the end of the, the rolling out this course. Um, and so the cool goal is to teach people kind of like, Hey, what you're hearing on the podcast, we want to kind of like teach people, give them like a blueprint, like you're saying, right? Step by step. So, so that's kind of what we're, we're talking about. And it's really cool to hear from your perspective, kind of how it is on the other end, because, you know, I'm over here trying to, you know, get these instructors together and get this and let's do this lesson. So um, it's nice to hear that feedback. And I think it's really true because as we're, as we're going through it and talking, it doesn't really, I mean, it matters what kind of niche you pick, right? As far as like being able to communicate the value of whatever that thing is to your customer. But as far as the principles, really for any service-based business, a lot of it is the same. You know what I mean? Yeah. As far as building relationships and building, you know, the no like, and trust factor with people and, um, you know, your website showing your face. I mean, we cover a bunch of stuff that really doesn't matter I mean, you could be setting up an accounting firm and you could probably still like the first half of the course would probably still apply to you, you know? Absolutely. Um, and so I think that's one thing we were seeing that's, that's been nice, I think, uh, for a lot of people is that. And then obviously we try to go into some more specific um, niches and things like that, but that's, that's cool to hear from your end. Um, so let me ask you some questions about, you know, so your business, so like you said, you're probably a little bit further along starting the course, like 
it, it, from everybody else in the course, um, you're probably a little bit, you know, had a little bit of a jump start um, on the business side of things. So let's talk about when you got your first, like you got your drone, um, you know, are you doing, I'm assuming you're doing, um, or I think we've talked about you're doing some real estate stuff now. Is that correct? correct? Yes. Yeah. That seems to be the bread and butter at this point. Yeah. So talk about, talk about that. How did you go about, you know, you got your drone and you're going about looking for clients. Um, how'd you get that first, how'd you get that first client? So the, the first client I got was actually through a Facebook classified groups. So like, you know, where I live at, I mean, actually essentially where anybody lives at, there's those local buy, sell, trade groups. And I essentially just put up a post and it said, looking for a realtor that wants a free home tour. And that was, it was actually kind of interesting because some of the responses I got back, people were like, uh, what's the caveat? Like, wh wh where's the strings attached? And it's like, no, 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 seriously, no strings attached. Like I'm just essentially just trying to build my portfolio. Um, and there was a few people that are a little bit fickle in the response, but then I found this one team, um, and they were the ones like, Hey, we have this house. I'm like, all right, let me check it out. They gave me the address and I, <laughs> I'm like, Oh, it was an $800,000 house, which out here, it's a pretty, it had an indoor swimming pool, had outside tennis court. And I'm like, oh, wow. no, I think I can, I can make this happen. <laughs> and so nice. like, I got, I got super lucky with the first house because it was That's just great. a very big, nice house. Yeah. And so it was interesting. Cause like I went out, I shot the house, I gave them the video and then. I, you know, I started trying to do the promotion through Facebook and like just nothing, just mm -hmm. dead end after dead end, no responses back in a lot of instances. And even a realtor I worked with, like they said, they, they loved the video. And then that was it. It was radio silence for probably about four weeks hmm. and just nothing. Um, then all of a sudden I got the phone call back saying, Hey, do you also do photography? And I said, well, yeah, I can do that. Like we're looking for a photo and a video for another house. Can you help us out? And that's when the next job came in. Once I started getting more stuff under my belt, at that point, I have more promotional materials. And going mm -hmm. back to like the demo reels, like I have, I have stuff for demo reel now. And mm -hmm. that essentially is, I think that is probably the most imperative thing to get the business going. Because the thing is, is like, you know, as a person who's always been an artist, you have to have a portfolio. And mm -hmm. the thing is, is it, you know, I've heard you guys talk about it till you're blue in the face on the podcast. You guys just talked about it like a week or two ago. Um, I think it was with Jeremiah you have to put in free work initially. I mean, if you're lucky, you might be able to get some paid jobs, but that free work, I mean, it, it sucks because it's your time, but it's, it's the thing you need to start building the ladder to get to where you need to go. Yeah. Um, and it was kind of interesting because like this is all at the beginning of this pandemic. Like, so once this happened, like, you know, my, I have not shot a house at this point without a mask on, mm. you know, and it's one of those things like I don't, you know, I, I meet the clients, I meet the, the homeowners and like, it's just, pandemic world for us and <laughs> i the part that kind of really changed my eyes on it was is that it's still a viable business even when everything's going wrong mm -hmm. you know because like right now because like living near two major metropolitan cities like people are running out of the cities right now they're mm -hmm. trying to get they don't want to be dealing with being quarantined in cities and they just want to be outside of it and so the the properties in this area are just they're going left and right and mm -hmm. real estate's booming right now mm -hmm. um and that was the thing is it was just getting that initial client really helped out. And the yeah, thing so is that is, first, that first like push over the ledge. Yeah. Correct. And the thing is, is like, you know, I can't, and this, this is the interesting thing too, is I, I don't really know what the template's supposed to be for home tours, but I know what feels right. And so like, I kind mm -hmm. of built my brand based off of how I feel the home should be presented. Mm -hmm. um, and that is kind of where I, I think it's starting to stick now because like, you know, it went from, you know, 200 bucks the first month to 500 bucks the next month. And then next thing you know, I got three or four gigs in a week. Mm -hmm. And it's just, it, and it's not even just with the same realtor. It's with other realtors in the area. Like, well, let's, I'm really interested in this. So you got the first client. So, it's, and it's kind of like, you know, we've discussed this kind of to the, the people in the course and I, again on the Facebook or on the Facebook, on the podcast, <laughs> the Facebook, sorry, on the podcast. Um, when you're first starting out, it's, it's like there's a giant boulder in front of you and mm -hmm. you have to like push it. Right. It's just like, ton, it can feel like tons of effort up front for like very little like movement, you know, but then once the boulder gets moving and you're pushing it, like the amount of effort required to keep going further, it gets less and less. Cause you like now the more you, are there. you yep. have more work out there. And it's just, I mean, and it's really, it's true with any business, you know, like even with Drill Launch Academy, we're more, like more of an education company, right? And we started with Part 107 Prep, and now we have other courses. But it's the same thing. I mean, I worked for months and months and months, um, getting almost nowhere when we first started this, you know. And then 
we got one partnership and that led to like a little bit and we got more our name out there and then oh and then we got the you know and then just kind of snowballs after a while so it's like mm-hmm. the people that end up succeeding are basically the ones who can just hang on and like keep pushing through it persevere until finally get something and then it takes off you know um so sorry but all that to say i'm really interested to hear how you went from you know sounded like you were really you know hitting the ground trying to get that free work and then we're patient and again somebody came back hired you for a paid gig um how did the next client come on was it the same company that hired you again for another one i guess how did you go from the one client to now getting booked three times in the same week it's interesting because it was it was organic it wasn't initially Actually, it wasn't word of mouth. And it's it really interesting because it was two realtors from the same company, but they don't actually cross each other. So there wasn't a communication. It was actually the person that originally thought that was kind of thought there were strings attached on a Facebook post. They eventually came on board, but the first gig I did for them was a paid gig. Okay. So yeah, it was, you're like, I already got my free one in. So yeah, I, I got the free one. Yeah. It's, I mean, I, and I'm willing to throw a little, like, you know, little bumps to people just to get sure. a business relationships started. But, um, you know, she had originally reached out and said like, Hey, I'm interested in this house. And then I said, I gave a response and never heard anything back. And then it was like four weeks later, she reached out to me. Like we had never even talked and she's like, Hey, I got this house. I need you to do a photo and video for it. I'm like, okay, cool. And told her, well, this is what my rates were. Went out, shot the video, gave her the product. I think it was the same night. And at that point, she came, she became consistent um, client. That's awesome. You know, and then uh, somehow I, and this is within the past month and this is kind of what pushed me over the edge was, um, I started doing kind of a cold style promotional, uh, marketing campaign where I made flyers. I mean, I actually posted them up on the, uh, fa- the Facebook group for the, uh, mm-hmm. drone to 1k and I just mailed them out to realtor offices figured, you know, like there's, you can't go into a realtor's office right now to say like, Hey, I'm John. I want to introduce myself and show you what I can do. So let's take a different approach. And so I decided to go the old school method and just do old paper flyers the way it used to be. Mm-hmm. Um, and I've, I landed a good gig with um, one of the local bigger realtor firms, um, went out and did one job for them. And at that point I got a phone call from their, um, their marketing director saying, do you do headshots? And I'm like, well, I can. And portraits are not my favorite thing to do. Cause that's, it's mm-hmm. too people involved. It's too like, Hey, turn a little bit to life. <laughs> and I'm just like, no, I like houses stay still. I can do that. They're <laughs> and so, um, I had done this headshot for one of the realtors. And then the next day she's like, give me your price list. She's like, I'm going to essentially lather our realtors with your information. And I was just like, thanks. I just, cool. I don't know why you do that, but I thank you. That's, that's a awesome and great thing to do. Mm-hmm. And since then, the, I, I essentially, not that I'm locked in with that realtor firm, but my face is out there. And the thing is, is the work yeah. has been coming in. And I, I mean, for the past, what is it? The past three months, I've had at least a gig a week minimum. That's awesome. That's you awesome. know, like I just shot a house this past Tuesday and I got another one coming up. Um, I think it's this next Tuesday. I got to check my calendar, but and now you're saying that you have a full-time job on top of this drone Correct. stuff, or are you yep. making this drone thing your full-time gig right now? I would love. So I, I mean, my job. I have a desk job. It's you know, I sit in a cubicle all day. I have an office that has no windows, so it kind of feels like a Vegas casino. We don't know if it's sunny or rainy outside. <laughs> and with my job pays well. I mean, that's that's one thing that, as far as building this business, has been very beneficial. Is that this has been the stepping stone to help me build the business. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But the thing is, is I. I like creating things. I like taking nothing and turning it into something. And that's where doing this work, I mean, and it's not necessarily just the real estate stuff, but just the creative services. I love it. I absolutely love it. Cause like, you know, whether you're doing a job a day, whether you're traveling to multiple places, it, like it doesn't bother me. And mm-hmm. that's the thing, you know, and this is actually something I wanted to really put emphasis on with this interview is you have to put the work in. You have got, you absolutely have got to put the work in because the thing is, if you think you're just going to stand around and like you said earlier, the money's just going to come to you, it's not going to happen. Right. You know, with the real estate industry, it's a very lucrative business, or at least that's what I'm seeing so far. And you know, the schedules change, the jobs change, the weather, you don't know what's going to happen. It's like it's say partly Sunday this afternoon, you get there, it's raining. And mm-hmm. there's times you have to go back to a property twice, you know, just to get the outside shots because it's not a crap you know it's a crappy day outside yeah and so it's it's just one of those things that you know you you really need to put the legwork in and whether it's promoting yourself on social media whether it's you know cold calling which i haven't really quite done that yet mm-hmm. um but you have to we did kinda... some cold outreach with your you know your flyers yeah, stuff, yeah, yeah yeah but i mean like as far as like doing like you know like you know hey well, i'm blah 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 i'm giving you a call and talking about my services like that yeah. i'm still kind of i'm trying to grease the rails for that one because it's just it's it's hard for me to do just personally it's hard to do yeah, in a in a quick comment on that, you know, we've had again 
several people on the podcast and instructors and stuff in our, in our courses. And some people, they like sales and they have no, like Cody Retlick. I don't know if you ever, if you guys have listened to his uh, episode. He's an instructor at Drone OK. He was a sales guy before he was in, into drones. So he's got no problem picking up the phone and just cold calling a bunch of people. Even I'm like, ooh, I don't know. I don't know I'm about gonna, that. <laughs> and then we have other people like Dominic Wilkerson, again, another podcast guest. And he was an instructor. He's like, I hate selling. I've never cold sold anyone. All he did was like build relationships with people on, on Instagram. Yeah. And they eventually hired him. He's had only like warm leads and in like inbound marketing, I guess you would yeah. call it, where people are coming to him for things. So it's not like you have to do one or the other. Now, maybe you'd grow a little faster if you're willing to like, you know, just cold call a bunch of people or, but, but that's not always the case, you know what I mean? Yeah. So, um, and again, for you, like you said, if you've got the full-time business kind of covering your life, it takes a lot of the pressure off of being able to build your drone business, how you want to build it, you know? Correct. Yeah. I mean, cause it's not, I mean, especially with any media business, like it's the initial startup capital is not cheap. Yeah. I mean, it's got your, I mean, you got to put a little bit of money into it, but I mean, you'll get it back or you just yeah. have to, you have to stick it out to get it back. Yeah. And I think what you're, what you said about um, you have to work at it is, is really important because you know, there's really two sides of it, right? There's like with anything, it's like knowledge and action, right? So I think sometimes people lack, right? Like the knowledge. And so they don't take action. But then even if you hand people the knowledge on a silver platter, right? Like people could listen to all these podcasts. You can get tons of good information from these. Like if you don't go out and actually like do something, like nothing's going to happen. Right. So yeah. it's kind of like you got to have both of them together. So whether it's reading a book or taking a course or whatever it is, right? Cool. You're getting the knowledge. It's good. But a lot of people, they just kind of sit there and maybe they don't have, I don't know what it is, the motivation or maybe they're a lot of people. I feel like they're just kind of afraid or what if this happens or what if it doesn't work and I look stupid or I don't think it's good. You know, there's so yeah. many things you can tell yourself about why you shouldn't do something when really it's like, if you just take, what's the smallest next step you could take, just do that and then see what happens. Yeah. And then go the, ba the baby steps. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Well, like even me, like, you know, like I'm, I'm the kind of person like I, it's, I, I love watching people share stuff in the group and say like, Hey, you know, can I get some feedback on stuff? But like, Oh God, I'd petrify me to do that. Oh really? <laughs> I'd be so scared to do that. Like, I just, I don't know. Like I just, I put the product out and just like, it's off into the stratosphere. It's not my problem anymore. The client's got it. I don't want to look at it again. It's, and <laughs> <laughs> you know, and it's, it's not that it's bad. It's just more of like, I, I want to move on to the next project and yeah, okay. you know, sometimes getting the constructive criticism can be very beneficial, but sometimes that resonates with people and it's hard to take feedback sometimes. And like, I'm one of those people, sure. you know, sure. it's not that I'm doing anything wrong. It's not that that person, maybe that one person doesn't like it, you know, and it's, it's well, tough to take it sometimes. And even if you're, let's say you're part of a community or something like that, sometimes, you know, you're ahead of other people. And even if you post it, you don't have to necessarily post it and be like, Hey guys, please rip this apart or give me feedback. You could just say, Hey, here's a job I just did. Take mm -hmm. a look. Because then a lot of people might find inspiration from that and go, Oh, that's cool. How did you do this? You know what I mean? You might be able to give them a piece of advice. So I think that's something that people struggle with too. I had someone email me today and say, Hey, I'm just having a really hard time putting anything on my website because everything I take, I feel like it's like not good enough. You know what I mean? They kind of have the imposter syndrome type of thing. Right. And it's mm -hmm. like, listen, you know, the internet is not a permanent place, right? If you take some pictures, get, grab some video, get something, throw it up, you know, keep practicing when you get better and you have something better, take the old stuff down and then put your new stuff up, you know? So, or, sorry, yeah, what you're I was going to say, cause like my, like I've been doing the photography stuff for a while. And like, I look at stuff, I look at my portfolio from like 10 years ago. I'm like, Oh, that's terrible. Why would I even post that? But like, you know, when I post it at the time, I'm like, this is the best picture ever. And <laughs> yeah. um, you know, it, you just, you get more honed in with your skills. You know, yeah. and the thing is, it's like even your idea of what is considered good will change, mm -hmm. you know, and it's, it's actually kind of cool. Like going back to the networking thing, like, you know, I have some, some of the students in the, um, the, the Facebook group, like we were, we're having private conversations. We're actually helping out each other behind the scenes. Oh, it's, cool. There's a, there's a whole conversation that's happening on the actual main page, but then, you know, like I'm working with another guy who's based out of England and he wanted to get into the 3d tour stuff. So him and I have been going back and forth for probably the past mm. three weeks, trying to help him build his stuff out. And uh, oh, that's awesome. I didn't realize that. Yeah. So, so cool. there's like, and that's, it's, I don't know how many people are going to talk about, but yeah, there's a whole underground scene going on <laughs> and they, uh, drone to one launch joined the 1k uh facebook group <laughs> you know like there's the people that's that are awesome. out in the forefront doing it but yeah there's all people there's conversations going on in the background too oh well, that's awesome i mean i feel like it's you know and it's i feel like it's important to have that right and hopefully people can you know listen to the podcast and at least feel like they're part of some type of group mm -hmm. or community but i just think yeah it's important to have people that you can go to and bounce ideas off of and 
um, get support. I just feel like in general, that's one thing I really like about the drone community. People seem to be very, I don't know if it's because it's like newer in the realm of technology or, or applications or what, but people seem to be for the most part, at least willing to help each other out and give advice and, you know, so. Well, I think it's, I mean, yeah, there's a lot of, there's an influx of people coming in, but like, it's such a, a niche technology that like, you know, it's like, Oh dude, you know, drones too. And you just, it strikes up a conversation, Yeah, you know, and it's that, it's that thread. common ground. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. 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 And I think, you know, it's, and some people get worried about like, Oh, there's just so many people getting into drones and this and that. And it's like, well, here's the thing. Like most of the people, like I, I try to tell people owning a drone is probably the easiest part of the whole equation. You know what I mean? Like being a good business person and having like good skill with your drone, if you're doing something that's like an artistic type of application, um, obviously you need to be good at video editing or, um, you know, know how to take good photos, which luckily you do since you had a photography background. But even if you're in construction, trying to do construction progress photos, it's going to be hard for you to just show up to a construction site totally cold and know nothing about construction to really mm -hmm converse with them and make them feel comfortable that you know what you're doing right so you're going to have to have some type of skill or some type of industry know-how coupled with some business skills the drone is just a tool it's not you know it's like oh i've got a laptop you know like i'm a you know world-class music producer now it's like that's, yeah. that's not how it works with the drones you know so um yeah, i think that's a point that so many people miss well, the one thing that, I mean, to kind of extrapolate what you're talking about. So like I had taken the aerial roof pro course, or I'm still working my way through it. And that was one thing that was really pointed out in that course is that you like, you need to become familiar with the industry you're trying to pursue. Cause you can't just be like, Hey, that's a roof. Yeah. That's, that's not, that's not enough. You, you need more information than that. And the thing is, is, you know, walking into a job with confidence that that's key. I mean, that's key with yeah. anything, you know, like yeah. you, you, the people that wouldn't, the, the Olympics, they don't go in there thinking like, oh, I might win. No, they're right. going in there to win. They're going in there yeah. to go do this and get it done. And that's something that, you know, th without that confidence, it's it's going to be really hard to succeed. Yeah. Yeah. And some people might think, think that's important and true. And some people might think, oh, well, how do I ever, how do I ever get that? You know, but you can, at, at a certain point at the beginning, you can be honest with people and say, you know, maybe you don't go after the biggest roofing company in the world. Maybe you find yeah. a local person and say, hey, listen, I've got a drone. I've been doing this. Um, I'm looking into getting into roofing stuff. Could I just, you know, go and model, model a couple of houses for you guys? And um, if it's helpful to you guys, great. If not, you know, we, whatever, it's no skin off your back. You can get insurance from Skywatch or Verifly for like 10 bucks for an hour. So you can tell yep. them, oh, listen, I'm insured for like $2 million or a million dollars or whatever. So like literally you don't have to worry about anything. Yeah. Um, you know, and then if you do that, hey, now you can strike up a friendship with them. You get to know the lingo a little bit more. It's just kind of, yeah, taking that first step and not being afraid for them to be like, huh, what? You know, just approach it and like, listen, what's the worst that could happen? They could say no. And guess what? You're in the exact same place. Exactly. Right you were before. Yep. <laughs> you might just feel a little bit embarrassed for 15 minutes, but you know, whatever. It's part of the game. Other people yeah. aren't willing to do that. And so that's your advantage, you know? Yeah. So. Well, that's the thing I've learned is just, you know, you'll have a hundred people do something and most people aren't going to do it. You know, they'll say they want to do it. They'll just get all excited. And once they actually have to start, you know, pushing that boulder that you were talking about before, they realize it's too heavy. It doesn't move real fast. And they're like, you know, I don't have time for this. Yeah. You know, yeah. We, live, we live in a world of convenience and sometimes things aren't going to be convenient. Right. Right. And I think, you know, people, if they think, oh, it's not moving fast enough. It's like, even if you're just chipping away a little bit at a time Absolutely. over a long period of time, I mean, yeah, it can happen for you. So, um, and I think, you know, you're a great example of that where you're, you know, you continue to, you know, learn new things, continue to chip away, keep setting things up. Like you said, you had a photography for dabbled in it for what, 10 years and oh, you know, now yeah. you're taking it more seriously and you know, you're able to get stuff going. So that's really cool. So, um, so we, now you, so you've got this, I'm kind of shifting gears back here, but you've What's got what? your first client, you've got these other clients. I mean, do you see it continuing to grow? Are you kind of wanting to stay in the real estate area like what are you kind of thinking for the future for um, the and it's the real estate wasn't supposed to be what i wanted to do uh -huh. it just it just happened to fall that way and like you know like i said i really wanted to get into the commercial business promotional type stuff uh -huh. um but once i found the real estate stuff i was just like you know actually it's you know it doesn't it pays the bills it's not you know yep. a huge but it can be a huge profitable um job but it was just one of those things that it, it feels natural and it's uh -huh. I have fun doing it. Like I really yeah. do. Like I get into it. Like this is going to sound really weird. 
I hate going to people's houses. Like as a kid growing up, I'm like, I don't want to go to people's house. Like, hey, you want to sleep over? No, I don't want to sleep over. <laughs> but then doing this as a business, like it doesn't bother me. It's weird because you, you kind of get to see these peaks and these little snippets of other people's lives. Mm-hmm. And it's actually, I, I, it's fascinating. It's absolutely fascinating. And it's just, you know, you get in, you're in there for maybe an hour, hour and a half to, if you're doing some other stuff and you're out and that's it. Transaction's over. You go home, you edit your stuff, you send it over to the realtor and then you're off to the next one. Yeah. And it's, it's, it's quick, it's quick to it in a sense, but it's, it, you, you got to put into work. Yeah. And that's where, that's where I kind of like it. Cause like, you know, I, I had done field service work for 15 years doing like commercial retail maintenance. And so this almost models that, but rather than like fixing people's sinks and drywall work, I'm flying drones and taking pictures. Like that sounds way more appealing. <laughs> yeah. 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 That's awesome. And I think, and I think one thing you're saying, you know, where real estate can be lucrative and if you listen to people who have listened to the podcast will know like the people who are doing really well with real estate have learned to kind of systematize the process Mm -hmm. and they can do a lot of houses quickly. And, um, you know, they have pretty built pretty extensive networks of, um, people in the real estate industry where they can stay booked all the time and they just have a process where they can, they can bang them out. Uh, And it's other people start with real estate because it's kind of the most seems to be the easiest to, well, not easiest, but as far as like, um, the most widely apparent like application yeah. for people to like, you can say, Hey, you know, you sell houses, this will help you sell houses and get more listing. Right. You know, it's a little e- easier sell. Um, but a lot of people do real estate and then they'll kind of dabble and move on to maybe other industries and areas too. So um, I think it's, you know, it's a great place to start, especially mm-hmm. if you kind of um, have some guidance and, and know what you're doing and, you know, are willing to kind of keep pushing forward like that. Yeah. Um, one question I wanted to ask that I feel like everybody always wants to know for some reason on the podcast is like pricing. What do you charge for prices in this oh, country? Uh, this uh, so what, uh, like in your, I know, and I know you're, you know, maybe your prices will probably go up over time, I imagine, but kind of where are you seeing prices right now for like doing photography of a home plus, um, you know, a, a video tour or whatever your kind of typical package is. So, I do. I, the one thing I've noticed is people don't like complication and I've looked at a lot of, and I'm not trying to knock on other people's business models, but like there's all these add on fees. There's all this extra stuff. And to me, like from a bookkeeping aspect, it's a nightmare. So I essentially do it this way with photographs is 125 flat rate video, $200, $200 to $250 flat rate. That includes editing music, you know, probably a three to five minute video. Um, and then I also has got into like Matterport tours, doing 3D tours of the place. And I do that for an additional 200 bucks. I do the photo video combined for 300 flat. I do everything combined for 500 flat. I don't charge aerial so, fees. Cause I look, I look at the drone as it's a kind of with the Fred light episode. It's a tool. It's a camera. I'm not going to charge you $75 to go throw it up in the air. You know, the drone work is it's imperative. Cause that's, that's what people want. When they said the first question, any realtor asked me, will you do drone work? Mm. Yes, I can do drone work. How much does it cost? It's part of the deal. Don't worry about the cost. This is what it costs for photos. This is what it costs for videos. Um, I know with a lot of the realtors, that model is very appealing to them because it takes all the guesswork out of it. I mean, and it's kind of weird because like there's such a template out in the industry where they're expecting this add-on cost. And you're like, no, I don't, I don't do an add-on cost. It kind of throws them off a little bit. But once they see that, and then once you do it, they just, they come back again. They're like, all right, well, it's, it's, this is what the cost is. I send them an invoice on FreshBooks and at that point I get paid and it's transactions over. Nice. Um, it's awesome. quick. Yeah, it's quick. I mean, and you know, as time goes on, I'll probably change it a little bit. I think I might bump up the video stuff to about like, keep it consistently at 250. Um, but like essentially what I'm trying to model the company is a hundred dollars an hour. That includes my time on site, my time editing. Mm-hmm. That's it. And at this point I'm floating in between probably around 80 to 125 an hour. And that's great. I mean, that, honestly, yeah. if you look at it by hour, I mean, that's a that's more, good that's salary, more than what man. people are making at their full-time jobs. Yep. Now understand that like, you know, your full-time job, you also have security and benefits. Health insurance. And, all, you know, yeah. <laughs> sure. All that stuff. Right. So if you're doing something on the side, you're usually probably going to charge in more, or get, be getting more per hour. But you know, we've had people on the podcast who, yeah, they're, they're keeping the hourly rate and they're scaling up all the way to yeah. full-time hours. So it's, well, and the, the thing is, is the more you do this, like when I walk into a house, like, you know, you know, you go to the front door, you go here, you know, you start understanding the layout of homes. And the thing is, is you, once you build your brand, you know exactly how you need to film it, how your photo, how, what angle you need to do with your photographs. And also the, the flight patterns, I think we'll see be, was the hardest thing with most homes. Cause like mm. some have no trees, some have yeah. trees everywhere. And it's like, when you try to right. film a house that's in the woods, 
It's not so easy to get the drone out and just start taking photos, yeah. you know. Can we cut um, this tree down real quick before? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I need I need to trim this up a little bit real fast. Yeah, yeah so yeah. that's that. It's actually I will say the drone work is always the hardest part because the thing is the logistics change all the time. I think mm -hmm. the job I had last week, I had a flock of like eighty sparrows trying to attack my my, my Mavic <laughs> Two, and I was like, all right, let me just get the video real quick and get down because I you know I don't want to I don't want to hurt a bird or I don't want my equipment to get trashed. So. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah, that's but, awesome. Well, cool, man. Well, you know what? We'll have to, um, you know, I, it's really cool. I think you're, I, I love talking to you because you're really kind of break, you're like right at a breakout point, I feel like, and are continuing to grow. So um, probably fun to have you back for like season four and we can I'm check in and, and see kind of like the progress that you've made and um, you can tell everybody all your sage wisdom at that point <laughs> on uh, how, to, how, to, how to make it big, you know, so um, anyways, well, we're coming up, you know, I usually try to keep these like 30, 45 minutes, but mm -hmm. um I don't know. I just, I really appreciate you coming on, Jonathan. I no problem, really enjoyed Charlie. having you in the group. You're just, you're super good about uh, participating and being helpful. And again, and sounds like you're having a lot of uh, constructive underground conversations as well. <laughs> uh, so, um, but no, that's just one thing I love every, everybody um, that we've come into contact with has been just super helpful and everybody's trying to build Absolutely. each other up. So I, I love seeing that. So um, the final question is uh, if people want to get a hold of you or they have questions for you, is there a, a good way where they can like check out more of your work or maybe ping you a question or something yeah my website's steadyfocusmedia.com and my you can find me on instagram at, at jsteady at jsteady okay cool. at jsteady yep. well, we will link oh and i'm guessing that's for uh, jonathan right yeah yep yeah, yeah. Cool. <laughs> uh, well, we'll, link, we'll link all that up in the show notes uh if you go to dronelaunchacademy.com slash podcast you should be able to find our show notes there uh find this episode in season three so uh, thanks again jonathan appreciate you coming on man. david all right all right, I hope you enjoyed that interview with Jonathan. Again, a really successful student of ours. Always nice to see people who go through the course, implement what they're learning, um, and have success with it and actually make some money. That's the whole point, right? Invest in some education, actually act on the education and the help and the guidance that you get uh, and get good results, right? If you get the education but you don't actually do anything, you're not helping yourself, you're not helping anybody, um, and you waste it. So don't waste it. Use the information that you learn in this podcast. Use the information that you learn in courses or other people's courses. I don't care. Books. Do something to continue to learn, continue to educate yourself. Keep practicing with your drone. You have to take action um, or nothing's going to happen. Even if you do really small commitments like micro commitments. I'm going to fly my drone for five minutes today. Chances are once you get out there and start flying for five minutes, you might fly for, for longer than five minutes. Um, or you know what? I'm going to go through this course. I'm just going to do one lesson. Right? Do something small. Um, micro commitments will um, stack up over time and get you to where you want to go. So commit to doing that. All right, remember, if you want a shirt, take the uh, one question quiz to show us that you listened to this week's episode or uh, leave a review for us on the podcast. Um, also, two $1 courses, promo code podcast, just one word. Uh, you can get um, either of those courses for only a dollar. Thank you so much for listening in. Excited to bring you next week's episode next week. Uh, and I'll see you then. Looking forward to it.